Meet Eric. How's it going? 46 year old man. Sounds about right. Who wears Speedos and likes to Wait. dance to what? gypsy music. No, 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 I don't think so. Uh uh. Well, isn't that special? <laughs> Hey everybody, what's going on? Eric here, and I'm gonna get started on this Ibanez, getting the buffing started and completed today. Uh, been wanting to do it for a while, but the weather has been pretty crappy outside. It's been cool and whatnot over here, and uh, raining basically. Today is supposed to be a beautiful day, so I might as well get it done. Uh, there are some clouds out there, but I am gonna open up the door to have some of the outside light, so I could look and see how I'm, uh, how this is working out as far as the polishing goes. So what I'm using here is a little air tool that is basically for doing buffing. It has an attachment on it. Um, I, this is not a universal tool for other uh, adapters for it. This is strictly a kit that is for a miniature buffer. So you have your cotton pad, then you have a buffing pad, and you have a polishing pad. Now the first thing that you want to do with any air tool, especially if you haven't used them in a long time, is you want to put a couple of drops of air tool lubricant inside of it. Uh, in this case, one or two drops will serve its purpose. Now I'm going to let this sit up like that for a little bit and let it, the oil kind of go down into the mechanisms that makes this air tool work. When I connect the air pressure to it, it's going to force that oil into the gears. If you add too much oil to one of these, or any air tool, uh, you'll have oil coming out of the air tool. And that can become a problem with what you're working on. So, let's get to it. Um, talk about safety first. You know, got to be safe. Alright, so let's talk about safety. I mean, talking about safety will be a waste of time with this because uh, we're buffing. The only thing problem you could probably have is either loose clothing or long hair and it could get stuck around this and pull a chunk out of your head or something. Um, otherwise, just pay attention to what you're doing and try not to burn through the finish. That's all I gotta say. Oh, and by the way, um, these compressors are loud, so it's gonna be loud. And I'll edit that shit out. So. Here we go. All right, so the compressor is going to get kind of loud. That's a given. I'll edit that down when I do the editing in the video. I'm going to start with the back of the guitar first. Uh, I'm going to use the buffing pad, not to the, uh, the haired one and use the number one cutting cream to start this off with. Now, you want to make sure you wash your hands. There's no oils or silicones on it. So I'm going to get started with this. Now I want to find out how fast this is going. And it's about right. It's right where I want it. So, apply the pad. Shake up the cream. I already did it, so not worried about it. So here we go. So the compressor is filled and next thing to do is to have a smoke 
and get this thing in the light and see if you can still see scratches from the sand, any of the sandpapers. So I'm looking pretty good here. So the next thing I want to do is start working on the sides. Now the neck, I'm going to do a thing with the neck where I'm going to sand the neck to where it has a sheen on it um, so your hand doesn't stick to it. That way you, know, you can have a fast neck on this thing. But I'm going to go over this thing one more time. The nice thing about this is that you have a lot of control and you don't have to worry about burning through anything because you're constantly moving around. Have some clean rags with you to wipe off the excess and uh, yeah. So that's coming out pretty good. Has uh, a nice, let's see the houses, the cars. Now I can kind of see a line going through here so I'm guessing that's where the, um, I'm guessing that's where the two pieces of wood meet together. So hoping that doesn't become a problem. It's not too bad. It's not very humid outside. It's about 60 degrees. Um, so it's not too bad right now. So let's get on to more buffing. Alright, so I'm done with the back of the guitar using the number one cutting cream rubbing compound. So now it's time to work on the front of this thing. And I went over it twice. So everything is pretty much uh, where I want it. There's no scratches from the sandpaper in it. So now it's time to work on the front. Alright, so next is number two, and this one here is the machine polish. I already changed out my pad, so I'm going to go ahead and get started with that. Shake this shit up, give myself another clean towel, and I'm using microfiber. Go ahead and put some on here. Don't need much. And the reason why I kind of spread it around is because I don't want this shit splattering all over me and across the garage. There you go. Alright, so I flipped over the towel and now it's time to polish the front. Now if you're wondering how did I buff out inside of these areas here, that had to be done by hand. So let's get to the top now. All 
All right, so now it's time for my favorite polish. I just washed out the polishing pad. So now I'm going to use Scratch Doctor. Shake this up. And what this is going to do is it's going to give it the final polish. And I don't want to use a lot, just a little bit. Yeah, it looks like we got some storms coming and uh, I'm losing sunlight over here so let's kind of take a look and see what this thing looks like in the light that I do have so like I said before this has some dings on it it's got some chips on it it's got a few imperfections here and there that uh, I really don't care about but uh, I just wanted to get out all, all the scratches that were in this thing so as you can see I accomplished that and I didn't burn through the finish. So let's get this thing out in the real light. Maybe you can see the. Well, I can't really see the quilted maple in it, but sure could see down the street. Let's see here. Oh yeah, that's what I want. Exactly what I want. So I guess now you can see that maple. So all I have left to do now is just the headstock, clean the fretboard, and put this thing back together. Well, get the rubbing compound out of all the nooks and crannies, but it uh, looks like this stuff over here is not rubbing compound, that is the ferros that got uh, polished. So for right now, it's time to clean up, put everything away, and in case you're wondering about the this is the buffer that I'm using. These are the rubbing compounds that I've been using. Got number one is the cutting cream rubbing compound. The other one is a machine polish. And for just fine tuning, right there. So that's it. Thank you, Air Compressor, for working great. Thank you, Little Buffer, for helping me do this job. And no, well, I'm wearing some of it. Time to take a shower. So now we are under the unforgiving fluorescent lights. And what I'm trying to see is any haziness, scuff marks, which means I will have to go over it again with some rubbing compound and then repolish it again and so far there isn't anything on here all the scratches that were in the finish are gone 
can't really help the dings and if there's like a chip here and there I can't help that like there's a small chip right here not much I could do about that it get better than light and there's some dinging going on over here can't really help that too much let's see what the back looks like oh yeah can you read my shirt yeah you can read my shirt no problem now the inside of the horns I'm gonna to have to polish those out by hand a little buffer doesn't get in there very well then work on the fretboard as far as cleaning that up and start assembly that's basically it so I want to thank everybody for following me on this and uh, following my channel new subscribers old subscribers thanks a lot for sticking around and catch up with everybody later hope everyone's having a great day